the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight. Um, and uh, I'll call this meeting to order. Members here present are Darrell Baker, Terry Matthews, Sheldon Tan, and Charles Lance. And uh, first order of business is uh, approval of the minutes for the regular session of the Commission meeting that was held on July 17th, 2014, at 6 p.m. So moved. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 With that being unanimous, the motion carries. Next is the approval minutes for the special session of the Lincoln County Commission meeting that was held on August the 1st, 2014 at 9 a.m. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That being unanimous, the motion carries. We are now on public comment. And first is Mr. Sharp regarding litter and dilapidated buildings. Well, about my favorite subject, litter. Uh, do we have a litter officer? No, we do not. Not right now. Are there any plans to get one? Yes, we do have it budgeted. It's in our budget. Yes. Uh, the dilapidated building. Do we have a committee for that? We do have a committee. If, when they have a meeting, is it open to the public? Yes. Is it publicized in the newspaper? I don't know that. No. No. <laughs> so, how do I know? So, I want, I want to attend. I understand. Well, Tell you what we can do is we can actually put that on our website and uh, and possibly advertise that in the paper. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next is Mr. Burgess. Yes. What's your first name? Leroy. Leroy. Okay. With the Helping Hands Food Pantry. Yeah, I just want to announce that uh, our pantry is a year old today. Uh, we are on 445 four, four, Cherry Street. We are being moved probably next month to downtown because our pantry is too big for the church that we're in right now. Uh, we are in contact with the uh, city right now of using their old building and our only met today. And, uh, I just want to let you know that we last month we served 1,240 people or well, 620 families. Why I'm here today is we... Slow down. I'm going to write that down. Okay. Okay. I got a copy of it for you. Yeah, that'd be nice. So that's when I have to turn into the FDA. Yeah. Uh, we're open every Tuesday, not like the other pantries around here. Uh, we do have a clothing department too. Um, this year in November, with the with the uh, facing hunger program. Uh, we're getting winter jackets for hand out to kids. Each family will, will receive one coat per, per child. Well, what I'm really here for is we need some help right now. Uh, time is hard for us. Um, we know mostly all of our money is coming from my brother and his wife working, and my wife is working too, and I'm on disability. And we're for, and we do have hot dog sales and all that, but that's the only way we're raising money. And right now we are in a little jam right now because we want to, to keep bu buying the food and keep giving it out. Now I do do the welfare office, they do emergency orders, they call us, and we do at least 10 a week for, for people for to get their food stamps. But we get food away every Tuesday, and um, all I can say is last week we did 125 families. It's averaging about over 600 families. And plus I do the backpack program for the school. <coughs> I just met with Facing Hunger Food Bank, and now I have three schools this year. Uh, I have West Hamlin, which is 29 kids that will be getting food for the weekends. I, I delivered on Friday to them. Hamlin, I'm doing 49 kids this year. We did 38 last year. And I'm also doing Midway, which is 26 kids. Now, it will grow when, when the counselors and the teachers find that their kids might need some food. And we deliver it every Friday. They get two breakfasts, two lunches, two dinners, and a snack. We deliver it on Friday, and we come back on Monday, pick up the backpacks, and we went with the kids, bring them in. If not, we just put it in bags and deliver it to the counselors. We don't know the kids. We just give it to the counselors, and they know who the kids are. 
So that's, I just want to you know, ask that we, we look at our application and see if we do need some grants. So you're, you've already you put in your application? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's the, um, this is different than the helping hands from the, um, the other place. Morrisville. I don't think so. So you, you, you all. Did you all apply last year? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, yeah, we got that's, it. That's when we received money about. last year? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. When we first started that, we were serving like 200 and some people a month. Now we're over a thousand people almost every month. And we're trying to hit a goal to like 2,000. That's why we have to move out of there and get into a place where it's going to be big enough to handle all the food and all. You know, because there's a lot of people that are up in the hollers and stuff that they, they can't get out just once a month. So this way they have an Four times they can come here. They can call all my phone. I got a page, page on the internet, everything. If they need food, all they have to do is call me, and I'll meet them right there. You know, and that's the way I want to do, keep doing it that way. That way, nobody goes hungry. Right. You know. Well, I want to explain something to you. Um, in our contribution policy, our contribution policy states that we give every other year, and that might be something that we can look at. You know, we could have, uh, you know, we we can amend policy, and I think that was a work in progress as we were going. So um, that's something that I'm sure that we can consider tonight. Okay. Um, next is Michael Forabante. Yeah. Did I? Did I Okay. Pretty good. <laughs> Concerning water. Yeah. I'm going to commend the actions of the board. The other day when you took those four motions concerning the Lincoln PSD. I appreciate that very much. I was one of those persons that was immediately affected by that. And um, I attended the meeting on July 24th, I think it was, down at the PSD. And I was shocked at the way some people were treated and I was shocked at the way I was treated and my wife was treated at that meeting. We had some valid concerns there and issues that were um, very important, water's very important, and to have it shut off like it did was uh, very dramatic for us. And so I think the uh, motions that you took I think are real important. I hope you follow up with that. Uh, we did receive an order from the Public Service Commission that the PSD was to immediately turn the water back on for us. And I appreciate what the Commission did and um, just wanted to let you know that. But and I want to say thank you too. And I wanted to say thank you. Um, and it was important for us. We had initially a couple of weeks ago, we we're going to come over here and complain bitterly about the issue. Um, but it seems like the board's taking some good action. Um, I don't know what's going on down there. I'm very concerned. I think it seems like you are too. And um, I'm going to volunteer my services. If you should need me to help you on anything down there, I'm a professional civil engineer here in the state of West Virginia and I've designed water system all across the state. So if there's any help you may need, you can call me to do that. Also, if there's anything that you want me to talk about, about when, what went on at that meeting, I'll be happy to do that too at any time you want. Um, how do you feel we're going to be moving forward on this? I will. Um, well, we we sent out basically we sent out our you know the things that in our power as the county commission what we can do. Right. Um, we currently have, uh, of course, our prosecutor is looking at you know any wrongdoing that is uh, taken you know that if it was if it has taken place, uh, and then he would report back to us <coughs> if there is wrongdoing and. Um, if I remember, I think it's chapter 16 of the, of the uh, state code, basically says that a county commission can um, um, petition the circuit court to remove members. Um, and in that same, same breath, so the PSD, they can do that as well. Okay. So if there's anything like that that we would have to do. Okay. Uh, but. Well, uh, once again, I want to thank you. I thought you did the right thing. 
and uh, again, I'm volunteering my services to help you at any time on any of those issues down there. Are you, you live in Lincoln, you might have said, right? Yes, I live over at uh, Tiny Ridge Road. It's over there at Priestley Grove. Lived out there about 27 years. Across from Priestley Grove. Across from Priestley Ridge. And um, we've been getting our water down there at uh, the PSD for about 10 years or so. Our well was affected by mining, and so we've been getting our water there for a long time. Okay. I think, you know, uh, we're, we're trying, like the uh, president said there, we're, we're, we've done everything that we can. We're in the process. This is a process, you know, we, the, all these people are looking at these different things and things of that nature. But one of the things thinking down the road is that it doesn't preclude you from serving. You know, there are positions going to become available on I mean, uh, returns expiring and things like that on that PSD board. If you would be eligible for that, it would seem to me like you'd be a good person for that. So I, I would okay. think. Well, yeah, I've like, done a lot of water systems. I know all the engineering companies that you're dealing with very well. And, and, and um, I think, you know, because I think we're going to get by this. I think we're working okay. on trying to figure out exactly how to handle this permanently and things. But just looking down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we want, this commission's always trying to put the most uh, able person in particular areas to work with particular things, and with your background, it seems to me like you'd be a natural for this type of, of a position. So, uh, as we go through the next uh, several months, year or so, uh, or if something would happen sooner, it, it would be something that would probably benefit you in the community and us, if you think about applying for a position on that board. Okay. We were surprised when we read in the Lincoln County Journal there was only two applicants or something like that. Two, so you would think that there would be more. The uh, the last time that whenever I think it was uh, the McMillan fellow, whenever he was appointed, there was two applicants and one didn't live in the district. So. Yeah, we live over there. Uh, well, our address is really Samarica, is how we get our mail. Four three zero really? County Ridge Road, Samarica. Yeah, the, the way the district, or the way the post office is run, they run in large areas. But we've got, we we've, we've lived out there for about 27 years. Now. Uh, will there be any more discussion on this tonight? Um, I don't have anything on the agenda for that tonight. Okay. Then we'll probably go. Um, but once again, we want to thank you for what you did. Thank you. Thank you, officer. Mm -hmm. uh, FIO RA. D A N T E. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Rick McDowell with the uh, Camp Lakeview update and a courthouse roof. tabulation of water samples that we do at the lake itself right, where the swimming area is for the kids that's what we're sampling and when we first started doing it in 99 we were looking at both total coal forms and e coli and one of the things that we learned as we went through this project was that total coal forms can include things like rotting wood and other kind of naturally occurring things while E. coli is just coming out of a gut of warm-blooded animals. So E. coli is a much better indicator of serious water problems than total coal forms. So we've sort of concentrated on E. coli and if you look at the chart, uh, over, 15, over the 15 years we've done 46 samples and we've had two that have been over the limit we've set the 200 colonies per 100 milliliters. So we're pretty happy with uh, you know, the fact that that's a safe place for us to be doing our programs with our kids. So it's just an update on that. And we've still got a week left with the free Wednesdays. But I'm just, as long as I'm talking about the camp, I'll give you this. <coughs> Uh, this year we're only going to have 10 different days last year we had, I mean nine different days last year we had 10. So this is just a spreadsheet on how much money we've spent. We're averaging uh, four and a half dollars per person 
who comes out, and it's not bad at all. That's not bad. It's, it's uh, really better than any year that we've done so far. Um, we've also had a lot of people. The fewest we've had one week we had 13, and the most we had one week we had 80. So we were a little short on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches <laughs> that week. It's hard but, to gauge. <laughs> yeah, it is hard to gauge. Uh, and we've had a variety of uh, mainly church groups providing the lunches for the kids. So that's kind of, I think it's been a real good program because we've, we've got a core group that keeps coming to ride the Tri River buses. Really glad the Tri River supports that. Uh, the kids from housing projects and <coughs> low income care reports. And so, so, so that's real good. So, if you have any questions about either of those, I'd be happy to answer those questions. Sure. Okay, and then I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the courthouse, courthouse <coughs> move and get some direction from the commission on this. Mary and I have been working on this for a while. Back in uh, February and March, um, we talked about how to move forward on this issue. Okay? Under state statute, there's a West Virginia Code, 5G1-1. Uh, and it's about architectural and engineering firms. And an entity like the county commission can advertise and choose a firm like that, an architectural firm or an engineering firm, uh, to take care of a project, which would mean the firm itself would do the bid specs, put out the bidding, oversee the project and all that kind of stuff. So back in, was it March? Back in March, we sent out to a variety of different firms. I don't know how many we ended up. I think we sent to five. Five? Yeah, we've got three responses. Rogers, ZMM, and? E.L. Rogers. Not Thrasher. ZMM, Sealing, S-I-L-L-I-N-G, that group. and. Yeah. So we got that. So um, the step that we can we can do now that the com commission can do because it's under uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Under two hundred fifty thousand dollars, commission can evaluate and pick one of these firms, uh, and then the firm would. After you pick the firm, then you negotiate with the firm and come up with a price. It seems a little backwards that the firm would be paid to do all, all this kind of stuff. But that's the way that the code works out. So the next step could be if the, if the commission wants us to, as Mary and I, and if you wanted to point any more people, could actually sit down, look at these uh, things called statements of qualifications that we've gotten from these three firms, and make a recommendation to the commission pick a firm, and then we would go into negotiations and agree on a price for it. Do it that way, we could bring you all three of those things. You could look through all of them. But it is a backwards kind of anti-intuitive process. I think, it would, I mean, since you've been doing this, and I know Mary's been doing it, if, if maybe you and Mary and maybe Ron, maybe Ron is here. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> that you all could, that's fine. I mean, you all could pick. Um, um, yeah, maybe we could just rank those three. Yeah, yeah just rank, 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 rank three, three and, and then say, okay. this okay. is our number one. This all right. Is yeah. and, things like that. and then what we can do on the next, and the we can next tell meeting. Why, why, what, right, what the right, reasons right. that we think this is the number one based on their. Because we need to get this at the, on the next meeting so we can get this thing okay. started. And then my, the way I think this would work, you would say, yep, we're going to take this firm, and then we go into negotiations with them and say, okay, this is a $200,000 project. How much are you going to charge us to do this? And they would know that, you know, if they charge 10 bucks, there would be that much left to do the project. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, that's what we're doing. All right. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. We'll bring you something next week. All right. Next is Ron Jefferson with the Lincoln County Green Waste Board.
evening, commissioners. Um, well, I want to give you guys some updates on phase five, you know, where we're at progression-wise, as well as kind of uh, unfortunate bad news for the future. Um, so we'll start with the progress. Uh, last week we finished up uh, three installations, uh, two out of contract one and one out of contract two. Uh, so moving right along there, which is good. Um, you know, I was on site for all three. Uh, been working weekends sometimes here and there, wherever it's needed. Uh, for some strange reason, our contractor has only been able to work on some weekends, you know, like Fridays and Saturdays, which unfortunately can sometimes extend the project a little longer in terms of time-wise, but he's moving now real well, so that's good. Um, so, been doing that. Uh, unfortunately, we're really not looking at any more construction phases. Uh, the DEP kind of alluded to us back in May that there might not be any more money for any other phases. Uh, you know, so we went to the DEP in July and, you know, we met with them and we said, okay, you know, is this for real? You know, is there really not going to be any more money or, or is there, you know, is there any way we can get any more money? They kind of acted like the whole deal is there's no more green wastewater money per se. Uh, you know, there were a couple of other departments. We discussed the possibility of maybe looking at a research-oriented phase as opposed to a construction phase, which would be more sample taking, more maintenance-related, uh, trying to, you know, get that squared away and working as long as possible. Um, but we really haven't had any fruitful efforts with that. You know, we, we emailed some people, talked to some other people in different departments. Uh, nothing's really come of that, unfortunately. So I'm going to keep working until the end, hard as I can, you know, getting all the construction done, wrapping everything up as best as possible. Uh, at one point, we had three people we had to find replacements for because they had dropped out of the project after it was bid. Uh, I, de I decided, I just kind of made it an executive decision, I guess, uh, that instead of installing new systems, we had some systems that we knew uh, needed worked on. So I just chose to use that money on those previous systems that we already had, and make sure they were working efficiently and uh, fix anything that needed to be fixed. Uh, so that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, I just wanted to also thank you guys for the opportunity of working with you. Really enjoyed being here. Um, you know, thank you, Rick, for being a good mentor to me and uh, teaching me the ropes. And so we'll. Uh, We'll see how it goes. Keep on working. And you'll see me a couple more meetings, I figure out. You know, I think based on our frames, we might have a couple months left in terms of the money-wise. Uh, so we'll just keep using it as much as we can. You're doing a good job. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Well, I think you got your shorts where I got my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, <laughs> right? Very <laughs> <laughs> good. All right, next on the agenda is discussion, possible concern, action. But I don't think you're Mike Webb. He's not Mike Webb. Yeah, that's what I was doing. That's Zach Brown. Here. All right, but it's Zach Brown with the Region 2 uh, drawdown request for Big Hearts Water Project Phase 1. Yes. Uh, we actually had a few drawdowns, so since I had two and Mike had one, that's a good place. All right. So, uh, the first one I have tonight is for the Big Hearts Project. Um, it is a small cities block grant drawdown, uh, number five. The total amount of the drawdown is $48,584.03. That goes to pay the Region 2 Planning and Development Council $1,584.03 for administrative work and E.L. Robinson Engineering $47,000 for engineering services. This project currently is uh, it's gone to bid and the contract's been awarded for construction. Uh, it's my understanding that welding is on site now uh, doing work at the tank site and both the other two contractors should be there. They might have actually already been setting up today, but work should start within the next week or two. Um, outside of that, I think Mike told me construction is scheduled to last almost a year, so it should be next summer before it's actually complete. Okay. So we need uh, permission for the president to offer us any Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, all those in favor for say aye. 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 That being unanimous, I wish you could. Thank you. I think the Lincoln County company got part of it, big parts project. I believe so. It was a welding. Uh, actually, someone posted it right on the front. I think Todd Schnacky, is Schnacky, that? Yeah. Schnacky, yeah. okay. And uh, Mike Inyer and Sons, I believe, got the third contract. 
this is a project that comes down a dean to school or I mean, in that area there, and that's what we're talking about. Good evening, gentlemen. Okay. Uh, the second draw I have tonight is for the Francis Creek Waterline Extension Project. It is the uh, small seas block grant drawdown number four. The total amount of the drawdown is $22,043.12. That goes to pay Region 2 Planning and Development Council $480.78 for administrative work, and Griffith and Associates $21,562.34 for accounting work. Uh, this project is currently, um, Rick Robertson spoke to today, they have to go to bid for this project in the next three to four months. Uh, I'm currently working on the environmental clearance so that we're prepared to go to bid whenever uh, design is complete and engineering is ready. Uh, that's about the status of this one for now. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to uh, give the president authorization to some of the drill down request for the Francis Creek project. I'll move. I'll second. Uh, in further discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 That being unanimous, motion carries. And the third draw down I have tonight is for the 10 Mile Creek Waterline Extension Project. This is an Appalachian Regional Commission drawdown number 15 in the amount of $2,636.43. And the entire amount goes to pay Region 2 Planning and Development Council for administrative work. Uh, this project's construction is complete now. I believe everyone's receiving their service. Uh, there's actually some project funds left over in the, uh, the IJDC funding source. We were able to get approval for the PSD to use that money to buy some new water meters, which they pretty badly needed from what I understand. Uh, so they've now been able to get those funds and purchase new water meters. Uh, with all funds being expended, except for what remains in small, or the uh, ARC grant, uh, project is in the closeout mode. We're getting all the paperwork done administratively, and I should be here within the next month or two with a final performance report to close the project. Good question. Do you need the other two commissioners to sign? Yes. You need to hand that over back to the How much was that drawdown? Yeah. That's the total. So the total of the drawdown, $2,636.43. Okay. Good choice. Okay. So we have a motion to uh, give the president authorization to uh, sign the drawdown request. I submit. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That being unanimous. Good. Thanks, all right. Thank you. All right. You may want to check those and make sure we got them. Okay. Will do. Next on the agenda, I put on here. Um, I spoke to David Webb, and uh, um, we were talking about some things that the uh, Guy Valley <coughs> Conservation District might be able to help us with. So what I was going to do is uh, issue a formal request to uh, Steve Billups and David Webb with the Guy Valley with the Guy Conservation District to. Um, to look at our flooding issues that we have from from the Hamlin area all the way back to the Yaki area, and um, see if they can um, uh, get the Guyan Valley Conservation District. I keep saying Guyan Valley, but the Guyan Conservation District to uh, to look at that and uh, and help us probably come up with solutions to our flooding issues. Down there. It's bringing in an agency to help us. Um, I was put this on the agenda. I'd like to go ahead and get something out to them to kind of commission them um, to begin, you know, let them know that we want them to help us uh, if they can, if they possibly can. 
Do I have a motion to send a request to them? So moved. I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That be unanimous. Motion please. Uh, No unfinished business. Um, if you look at the new business, 